T- t- tell me a little bit about how this tour came about. Uh, Martin Parsons uh, and the Crime and Comedy Theatre Company <clears throat> came up with this idea of doing The Hound of the Baskervilles um, as a as a radio play on stage, you know. And um, he approached both myself and Colin to say, would you be interested in doing this um, as Holmes and Watson? You know, and we both said, yeah. I mean, Colin and I worked together many times on it, as well as it, on Doctor Who, but uh, in theatre as well. So um, we, we've always been good friends and uh, we thought this would be interesting, um, but we weren't sure how the audience was going to take it. Mm. So, uh, yeah, two years ago, we did a small tour <clears throat> of the west coast of the UK um, just for about a month. And uh, it worked remarkably well. I mean, people... It's a bit like um, War Horse or House, uh, uh, Life of Pi. Mm. You know, after about five seconds, you forget that it's an animal. You forget it's a puppet. You yeah. see the animal. And it's the same with, with this. That, yeah, it's a studio. We're all sitting around uh, or standing around and we're reading from scripts. But there's an interaction. Um, and it's being, it's being done very much from the book, not from an adaptation of. Mm. It's taking, so uh, Watson is very much the narrator of the story throughout um, as, a, as it transpires. And in the best uh, traditions of audio, uh, you you lay that before people or they fill in the gaps. Yeah. I mean, people could come to the theatre, close their eyes and they get the whole, the whole panoply, you know. But open your eyes and you see the inside of the recording studio and the technicians working on the foley and making the sound effects and... Uh, how it all works and how people are sitting at the back picking their noses, you know, and, uh, but we can interact with each other as actors, as well as, you know, if it was just purely a, a radio play um, being recorded from a studio, it would be deathly dull. It really would. But no, we, we imbue it with theatricality. The lighting is changes, you know, and yeah. uh, there, there is music that links one scene to another and all that happens theatrically. Uh, but the actual basis of the play is actors at the microphone delivering lines, painting the oral picture for people to fill in the gaps with, which is, you know, what what audio is all about. Were you a fan of Sherlock Holmes yourself? Well, yeah, as a teenager, I, I was very, I was a great fan of um, of Conan Doyle's stuff, um, uh, and Sherlock Holmes, and uh, yeah, I remember. Um, you know, reading quite a lot of the stories, including Hand of the Baskervilles. But it's bizarre that to this day, when they say Hand of the Baskervilles, I still can't remember who did it. <laughs> I'm going, even in the middle of the show, I think, who's who's the villain here? Which one's the villain? Yeah. <laughs> it's so well, it's well, so beautifully woven yeah. um, that uh, it, it takes you on, on a journey. Yeah, I mean, uh, during my teenage years I, I was um you know a great fan of, of Conan Doyle and in fact I did a play at the Victoria Theatre in Stoke many years ago called Conan Doyle Investigates because wow. he himself was a great investigator in there was a, a cattle maiming happened in Great Worley just outside Birmingham and they they uh, arrested this Asian solicitor Adalji um, and uh, Conan Doyle got involved in this and was a consulting detective, if you like, on the whole thing and proved that he could not have done it because he suffered from astigmatic myopia. He could mm-hmm. only read things like that. Oh, my word. So the idea of being crawling around a field in the dead of the night, maiming cattle, is just not on, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a fascinating... Conan Doyle himself was a fascinating character, you know. Yeah, and um, he wrote beautifully, and the great thing about good writing is it lasts. Yes, you know, be it him, be it Chaucer, be it Shakespeare, whoever you know, um, that writing will last in the next generation. And it's interesting how many young people now are picking up Conan Doyle and reading it and thinking, mm. "Oh, this is really rather good," you know, whether it's yeah. on, on iPads or Kindles or whatever. I don't care. Um, I prefer a book, but um, you know, read it by all means. Get yourself involved in that in that world, which uh, in which you pop, you populate the the yeah. people around you and the way that they look and 
the, the landscape around you, which is basically what audio does. It's it provides that oral landscape for people to populate themselves in their own minds.